Welcome back to the third installment of the 13th Gentleman. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. Today we're going to go through, it was kind of a fun little yep. experiment. Uh, they decided, the guys who hosted, um, they wanted to do a completely blind test on all of us with kind of a fun little twist. Uh, so not only was it, they didn't know what it was because they ended up putting, they had uh, somebody put it into a wine bottle mm -hmm. and number them. So that was kind of an interesting part. But the twist was mainly they're all straight bourbons. Four of them are sub 40, I think, including one sub 20. Yeah. And then one was going to be Over more here. in the 80 to almost $100, depending on where you're finding it. And if you don't know, does, does it make a difference? Yeah, does, it affect the, does it affect your choice to buy a bourbon based on, based on the price? Or yeah. are you going to go off of a friend's recommendation? Right flavor profile and yep. just be done with it. Uh, the other interesting part was they did, they printed out, they, they, they were yeah. pretty formal. <laughs> they printed out little sheets, sheets so you could go through for each tasting and kind of wrote, write some notes and what, you know, what your thoughts are and then rank them. So you know, at the end of the night, rank, sort them and figure out what, you know, which one did you like most before you know what they are. Mm -hmm. I will say it was, it was somewhat surprising. Yeah. Uh, I know my pick I'd never even heard of. So <laughs> how about that? Uh, but overall, I think it was a, a fun little experiment and a good time. And, and yeah, so. My favorite was the cheapest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was my second favorite. So, uh, so taste number one was, funny enough, the most expensive. So this is Resilient. It's a 14-year-old... Uh, Dickel? That, that's the rumor, that it's sourced from Dickel. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bourbon, not filtered, so it's not, not a Tennessee whiskey. It mm -hmm. is a bourbon, um, but it's sourced 14 years, super high corn, which I think a lot of Dickel ends yeah. up being super high corn, and is somewhere in the 85 to to $100 for a, for a bottle. Now, 14 years, pretty solid, and it's, it's a... Very solid proof, 126.6, mm -hmm. something like that. So this was my number two. This was my number three. You get a little bit of ethanol. Yeah, 126, I would think. Proof. That's going to come through. Actually, it's coming through really strong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did this outside. And it was in the and 40s. It was chilly, which kind of mutes down a lot of the, like, the ethanol doesn't off gas as much mm -hmm. so like it does it did mute down some of the notes but i think out of all of these this is the highest proof yeah um most of them are right closer to 100 it's not a whole lot i will say i remember writing a lot of the exact same notes over and you know yep. a sweet a brown sugar a caramel Fruit, and those are very fruity. common in so many uh Bourbons, anyways. Yeah, off the taste immediately. It's sweet. I get a cherry right, right out of the gate. A little bit of a burn too. A little bit of a burn <laughs> is the very first thing I get. I ooh, there's a candy. I do get a little bit of a candy note right off the front, but the middle of your tongue picks up all of that out ethanol type burn. Yeah. Peppery. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's not. It's not a high rye, so it's a uh, eighty. Four, eight, and eight. So eighty-four okay. percent corn, eight percent rye, eight percent malted barley. Yeah. So you're not, you shouldn't get too. You wouldn't think. Wouldn't think. I'm, I'm there'd be it that up. much of a pepper or a pepper spice. spice. But honestly, that comes across more. Like I, I, I know you aerated. I just did a little bit of a chew. There is sweet around there, but there is more of a. Really rem reminds me of rye. Mm -hmm. Like more of a baking note, a baking spice. A little bit of a Whew, oak tannin it really sticks around. Whew. Yeah. Oh, and that's I will say, yeah, it's um, it sits there. Like yeah. there's a. I'm gonna get the hug here. In a small minute. film that goes <laughs> it com comes across your mouth, so it's really oily. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting the hug. It's not coming off as sweet as I would have. I don't know. My initial thought would have been a little bit more sweet. But I don't get that. I get no. it a little bit on the nose still. The nose is very very faint. Yeah, there's not a lot to it. No. Yeah, it's it's not coming across outside of an ethanol no, note. Yeah. It's what really just comes out really strong is an ethanol note. 
very sweet, very fruity, kind of a cherry. I'd say and like that pepper spice, I think, kind of takes it over at the end. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> maybe that's a barreling thing um, and, and pulling off a lot of the oak tannins and, and that kind of stuff, adding to more of that spice note because at that low of a rye, there really shouldn't be that kind of spice. And then, yeah, there comes the... The, the warmth. I got. I just got the, the Tennessee hug. trickle. Yes, I got the Tennessee trickle. I'd be curious if they did. If it really is George Dickel, if they went through the the charcoal I'm mellowing. Just, no, I don't think it's charcoal mellowed, but I thought. Well, it can't be distilled in Tennessee, bottled by them. It's barrel yeah. thirty eight. So you can go on there and look up your barrel mm -hmm. and the notes that they're getting from it. Bottles, you know, fill dates, bottle dates. All oh, that char four, that might be why you're getting uh, the spice. So this yeah. is a pretty high char yep. on the um, on the barrel. So and yeah, one twenty six six. It's going to have a little bit of a a little bit of a bite to it. I would just think. All right, so here's the snob comes through. <laughs> it's an eighty to one hundred dollar bottle. I would expect it to be a little smoother. Yeah, it's fourteen years old. I would expect it to be a little yep. bit smoother. I would agree. It's really sharp. I would say not necessarily worth the, uh, not, not, not worth the squeeze. Maybe it was proofed down a little bit, with the sweetness. Yeah, maybe with a, maybe a little bit of water in yep. there or a cube. Mm. It's probably really nice yep. with a cube. I know you said it was your number two. It was number two for me. It was my number three. Uh, so the sweetness does start to, once you get past all those ethanol and pepper notes. The I got vanilla, is there. some cinnamon. Yeah, there's a lot of, I get a lot of black vanilla. pepper. Those are the main ones I get off the taste. I think it's a pretty decent bottle, but I think, yeah, again, with the proof and being kind of harsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I, maybe with the, uh, having it over a cube, uh, yeah. it'd probably be really, really good. Yep. Overall, not bad. Probably, well, it's pretty simple. I know I didn't rank it number one. You didn't no, rank it number one. I'd rather, uh, I think I'd rather drink my number one, which was much cheaper. So we're now we're going to switch over to your number one. And I think almost everyone's seen this, <laughs> but probably no one's bought it. That's kind of the funny part. So we There's got some diamonds in the rough. You just got to be willing to try them. Yeah, I agree. It's so Evan Williams, bond with bond. We, you know, we've gone through some of that. So we know it's going to be a hundred proof. So it's going to have a pretty solid body to it. We know it's at least four years old. I think the rumor is more like five-ish. And it's Heaven Hill. I mean, it's gonna have a pretty solid. And this one is the same mash bill as most of their other brands. Right, right. So. So it's, yeah, you're not gonna get anything weird. Uh, we've got 78% corn, 12% uh, malted barley, 10% rye. So again, now this is gonna have, technically it's got more per rye. Yep. But if I recall correctly, this is sweet. That's all I remember. Also for, known as the white label. Yeah. And I've seen it forever and <laughs> never picked it up. Just assumed, because it is almost always at the bottom shelf. So just assumed that... Well, we've done a, we've done our episode on the, uh, yeah, that's true. On the, the bottom the, shelf, and there's there's some good ones down there. You just got to be willing to... Uh, experiment. Experiment. And possibly pick wrong. <laughs> so I think this is definitely one... It raised an eyebrow for the price. It's not a bad drinker to have on the bar. 15 to 20 bucks, depending on where you get it. Yeah, I think the MSRP is like 17 or 18. So right in there, you can get handles of this for, you know, again, 20, 20 some high 20s, something along those lines. You're, and this is one you could, if you had the, the decanter on your bar, you could throw you, it in there and nobody would know. Nobody would know. But right off the nose, it's, it's sweet notes. Yes. Don't get any ethanol. No, there's no burn. Mm -mm. And then, okay, so now you're going from a 126 to 100. 100. So it is going to be a little mm -hmm. more mellow. Yeah. But it's still 100. Sweet. I get some vanilla. Caramel. Yeah, I get the caramel. I'm not at a vanilla yet. And light. It's not, again, it's not, there's not a lot to the nose off the, off the first, you know. It's smooth. Mm. Yeah? Yes. All right. Very smooth. And sweet all the way through that corn. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, that's candy. Yeah. What, is that a little bit of cinnamon? A little bit. I think there's a little cinnamon, but that's like, that's candy. That's, um, 
that's hot tamales, that's fireballs. The red hots. The red hots, yes. That this is this is totally any kind of a cinnamon candy you've ever had. That has that in it. It's all super sugared. It's just a touch of a cinnamon note. It's really nice. And now the cinnamon comes through on the nose a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But still very sweet. Like yeah, the, very candied. The vanilla. And again, the nose, get it through the taste. I mean, it's just sweet all the way through. Mm. No burn at all. No. It's not burn. I mean, you get warmth from that warmth. cinnamon note, but it's not an ethanol burn. That, that had a little an ethanol warmth from burn. the proof, given that it's 100, but not. Yeah. Yeah. Not a, not a, there's no harshness to nope. this. It's very mm -hmm. smooth, very mellow. I am totally, once I get through, I got a few drinkers I need to work through. <laughs> This yeah. I think this may be maybe my new drinker. It's really really nice for the price. Next time we get together with friends, we just throw it in a decanter. And at the end of the night, let them know. I don't see how you complain about this. I don't. Mm -mm. There's nothing. There's just nothing wrong with this. It's it's smooth. It's got a nice. It's not super complex, mm -mm. but it's got a very nice flavor profile. That's, you know, if you're not looking to you know, sit there and try to pull out a lot of notes and you just want something that's got a good taste profile and a decent amount of warmth to it, this is a good pour. This one does not need a cube. No, mm -mm. I don't think it needs a cube. It probably, I don't think it would hurt it. It still hold up to a cube, but I don't think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little. Just, it's just already sweet enough. It's already smooth. I, mean, it does, I don't think it needs anything else. I'm not sure even a splash of water would do would open it up anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. I think, I don't know. A small cube, maybe. And that's about it. Or if, I mean, if you are just going to have it as a drinker, over ice, I'm sure it'd still be pretty good mm -hmm. as just a, you know, I'm just going to hang out, throw, throw a cube in a little bit of glass and, and go. But Not bad. And, and I, I just, it really boggles my mind with the price because I'm sitting there, this is kind of comparable the, to Buffalo Trace. The benchmark. It's, it's along the same lines, mm -hmm. but it's 100 proof and it's cheaper. <laughs> and it's not so freaking allocated that you can't ever find it. Yeah. That's, that says something. Buffalo Trace, if you're watching, take note. <laughs> but Buffalo Trace doesn't have a, it's not overly complex either. Nope. And it has a lot of the similar, a sweet, a little bit of cinnamon. Again, it's just that, that image. It's. Mm -hmm. the ones that are down on when you go to the liquor store, it's Absolutely. kind of the, the shelves that are below your knee. Yep. It's the you're anything. looking down on it, it makes it's, you it's either a plastic handle or it's this. I'd take that in a plastic handle. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well now that we've tried it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, but you, you get past the I would have uh, never bought it. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. It would have been interesting if they just lined all five bottles up on the at the meeting. I bet people would have gone through this last. Probably correct. Yeah, I would see that. I could def definitely see that. Yep. But if you start with it first, I wonder if people's person, once you start getting to other ones. Comparing wise, yeah. this, this stands this up. Would, this would, this it would really hold does. its own. It does stand up. Gotta love. Hey, you know, you're like I said, you're getting the four years, you're getting, you know, all the rules that go along with bottled and bond. Very nice. Fun. All right, now we're gonna move on to, huh, funny enough, this was my number one. This is what I picked, which I never even heard of before, but why, why not? Uh, apparently, uh, was it Paul? Paul drinks this a mm -hmm. lot. So he really, he really enjoys this particular one. So it's Hulling Station. I believe they have two, if not three bottles out of there yeah there's a, i know there's a single barrel a single barrel bottle and there's i think one's called like what was it old dominic and then there's another one i think it's got a, it, the label's blue yeah and they're all linked back to this old dominic um uh, you know in memphis mm -hmm. he had a grocery store or which seems very common now now that i think <laughs> about it like thinking of some of the scotches we've done they were doing bottling some whiskeys in ceramic jugs mm -hmm. and they would send it down the rivers because on the uh, rail on the, the rail, rail and the river yeah. i mean the river's right there when you're in memphis so 
so yeah, they were sending that all over the place. And then uh, what? They This was they, back in the mid-1800s. 1800, right. Then Prohibition came. They stopped. They just stopped. They st- stuck with the grocery and got into like other beverages. Mm-hmm. And then they've sold off everything else and kind of came back to this, this but it had a, it had a really good reputation when it went. If it yes, it was well known. Came to, yeah, very well known. If you saw it, you, you bought it. Yeah. So I never even heard of it. Thought that was kind of fun. But this is my number one. We're starting uh, to see some stuff come out of Memphis. The Blue Note, that river set. Yeah. Yes. But uh, nothing's, it's not aged by them. They're barrel picking out of MGP. MGP. So... Midwest Green, but they're very, uh, there's a couple rumors that they've actually reserved, like they've already picked barrels, Hmm. like they have their own, whatever, Rick House or whatever it is of, you know, things they've already picked, put aside, and they're, they're going to go forward with that. But I don't think they've gotten into any kind of production of their own juice. I don't believe so. It's a little, a little interesting. Oh, they're holding out. They've got some stuff stashed away. That's a possibility. But this is the this is one of those forty and under. This one's actually I think thirty thirty something. Thirty thirty five, yeah. thirty six, thirty seven bottle dollars a bottle. Yep. So. Now one of the things they're they're very specific in here is uh this is a higher rye mm-hmm. whiskey. So this is fifty two percent corn, so just barely qualifies for bourbon. Forty four percent rye and four percent malted barley. This should have all those spice notes that we were getting on that first one should come through in there. That's also was a big surprise when... What number was this for you? This is my number one bottle. Number one? And you're not a rye guy. It's a 44% rye. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the things. Got, I think was, we got a convert over here. It was a big surprise. But there's a lot of... I get sweet tea. I can see that, yeah. So I do tend Leather. to get a black, black tea, like unsweet black tea with rye. And this has a lot of the corn sweetness going on in it. And it's kind of what I get. It's very, very sweet. Mm-hmm. But on the nose for me, I got nothing but leather. It's super sweet up front. And then I get all those rye notes in the back of the yeah. tongue. The baking spices, not exactly a black licorice, but it's reminiscent of that. It's got a little bit of... I kind of chew on it. That's where I get I get that Can't rye be. that rye yeah. flavor when you kind of chew on it. Okay. But that sweetness up front, it's kind of like a very ch- cherry. Yeah. 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 The darker fruits. It's mm-hmm. definitely a darker fruit. It's not a maraschino. It's more of a, a you know, black, a black cherry. cherry. And I get a lot of. Is that leather or is that like I, almost tobacco? There's kind of like a. Yeah. There's a. Earthy, musty mm-hmm. thing going on in there. Pretty good. Yeah. It's still, it's, I will say, all right, so I think this one's 100 proof as well. Uh, almost certain. Do, 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 do. And yes, 100 proof as well, but not bonded, which Mm-mm. fine, whatever. That uh, We know source sometimes you can and can't do that. Depends on how you set that all up. But so far, the most complex. Yes. It's got a couple different layers. Mm-hmm. It's got a couple different, like, big differences in their notes but still very smooth. Like you're not getting a harsh flavor off of any of this. No, not at all. I'm trying to think for me. So I went bottle the, the Evan Williams, then I went the Resilient. This might have fallen in your third or fourth Okay. for me. Yeah, this was, I picked this as number one. I picked Evan Williams as number two, and Resilient was number three. So the last two come down to my two least favorite? No, I think this is, again... It's a good bottle. For 30-ish, 35 yeah. $36 a bottle. Yep. I don't think you go wrong. No, it's a very solid, solid bottle. A lot of good taste profiles. Different. A high rye, if you're interested in that, <laughs> with the sweet notes. But I think it's a, it's a really solid bottle. And, again, I, I just... Not something I've ever even heard of or looked for until this. And now, yeah, that's not a bad bottle to have around. Next trip to the liquor store, it might pique your interest to get your own bottle. would probably be a really good mixer. 
Mm -hmm. The fact that it has a little bit more of those rye notes in there. Manhattan. Like, I could think of Manhattan would be mm -hmm. really good with that. That is, that's quality. Yeah. That's very nice. But still, less than 40 bucks. And I'm going to say at this point, I, I materially enjoyed that more than the $80 plus bottle. Yes. I think that I just. Now going back, I would probably re-rank. I would move that into two. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Switch them up. All right. This one, this one, this one's fun. Cause, so the, to me, this one also, there's some memories here. Uh, old granddad, my buddy's parents used to drink this. So yeah. as soon as I saw this label, I was just like, Pop and McGlone? <laughs> I don't see it very often in the stores. I, I, don't, I don't, I think it's almost, it's always there. You just glance over it. Gotcha. I'm almost certain. It's just, it's not something I ever would want to look for. Mostly because I just, it's almost an unknown uh, looking, trying to find the, any information on this bottle is difficult. So this is a Jim Beam Centauri partnership. Technically it's owned by Centauri. Jim Beam does the distilling. Yep. So it is a partnership there. And at one point, it almost the, made its way out, yeah, out of the brand. They were done. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it makes sense. I think the resurgence of bourbons and whiskeys, there's a lot of the branding and the names and there's a lot to that. This is kind of a nod to a drink that, you know. They're also a Jim Beam though. They brought back Old Tub. They did. That one's gaining some momentum right now. So yeah. I think, I mean, I think everyone's heard of Little Granddad. Mm -hmm. I'm sure not many people can say they probably ever had it. Oh, I had it. I stole it. <laughs> but no, with uh, with uh, old tub that that's out on the market now. I mean that uh, we've enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. We bought two or three bottles of it. Absolutely, and made a recommendation this past weekend mm -hmm. to somebody like give it a shot yeah. for you know for that old tub for if you can find it. 23, 24 23, yeah, 23, 24 bucks. It's a very solid bottled and bond from the Jim Beam. This, kind of the same ballpark, higher 20s is usually what mm -hmm. this is gonna be priced at, maybe almost 30. Um, but you're now you're talking 114 Team. proof. It is a beam, so it's, you know, it's gonna be a, a pretty solid mm -hmm. blend. Um, again, a little bit more corn, so we're in, more in the 60s for corn, but pretty high rye. Kind of light on the nose. Like nothing really over, no, over No power. particular note. No. I'm gonna say ethanol is the first thing that comes <laughs> off the nose. I do get a little, a little bit of that cinnamon, like the baking spice side. Not crazy sweet. Mm -mm. No, on the taste, it's cinnamon. Okay. Brown, brown sugar, almost burnt brown sugar. Yeah, but I come back to the nose. I'm not getting any of that. That's way sweeter on the palate than it is on the nose. The, I was actually, that's a little surprising because that, that is a, a big difference, but then it is cinnamon. That's a yes. lot of cinnamon. <laughs> this is a bourbon for Christmas time. It is, <laughs> and a nice little, I got a little hug on that. Like, there's a little warmth a little, that comes little. through on that. It's not as strong as a 126, but I could see that first note, like if we hadn't already had a 126 yeah. and two 100s, this 114 probably comes through solidly, but. You get that cinnamon on the front, and as it makes yeah. its way, then kind of pick up some of that burn. Mm -hmm. And then I'm feeling warm, but. Yes, it's more warm than the yeah. full, like where it kind of comes through your chest hug. Mm -hmm. It's just warmth, yeah. like it's overall warmth. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't, I don't get a whole lot off of this one. If you're not mistaken, this one for me was. I think this was number five a little for me. Further down. And but now that I come back to it, it's not bad. No. It's it's very flat. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna say watered down, but the, a lot of the notes are muted, and it's just like a lot of cinnamon, and that almost overpowers everything else. It's just a cinnamon bomb. There's there's a sweetness buried. <laughs> and I don't know what the sweetness is, but it's kind of just buried in there. It's almost like a cinnamon gumdrop. I would have thought, I don't know. I guess I was, I was expecting a little bit more of a sugar note to come through, like a, a brown 
sugar or a something. I just, I, I don't. That but, initial taste, I, I got whew. brown sugar, but as I go back, I don't get it anymore. It is, it's, right now, everything here is, car, is yeah. Cinnamon. Not caramel. <laughs> Not caramel, sorry, is cinnamon, yes. This one, I, oh, that caught me. <laughs> oh, and there's still some heat there. Anyway, I'd be interested for this one uh, with a drop of water or yeah. a cube. See if it opens it up. Bringing it, bringing maybe down that cinnamon note and seeing if something else comes pull out. Pull some of that sweetness out because as of right now, it's fine. But right now, I, I totally agree. It's it's probably my least favorite. There's not, yeah. There's nothing outside of that cinnamon note. Mm -mm. That's super strong. Yeah. If I had this and the other being we mentioned the old tub, I'm going oh, old tub. Old tub, so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Little less proof, but more complex in the profile. Um, there's a little bit of a cinnamon note there, but there's so much more sweet yeah. notes there. 27% rye, 10% malted barley. It, I don't know. It doesn't come off as rye notes. It just comes off very... It's, for me, it's just, eh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got good color. Yeah, and... it's it's a darker the no, whiskey. The, the nose it's... is faint. The... No age statement. It's Taste. not bottled and bond. So, I mean, you don't know anything as far as how long it sat in a barrel. They don't really share any of that kind of stuff. Now, looking back, if they were going to discontinue it, I might see why. It, there's just not a lot going on with this bottle. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what audience that pulls. It, it just, like, it doesn't. I don't know. I don't think it talks to anybody in particular so mm -mm. i could kind of see i could see dropping that line and going for a different because you could take that and maybe blend that with something a little bit more sweet yeah. that'd be really good you could blend it with something a little heavier on the rye i think that would be really good but you know get more into the baking spice side of things but where it sits it's just like mm. nope yeah. <sighs> yeah i don't see this one's being added to my bar no no it's not as it is i'm trying to think of even like a mixed drink where cinnamon more of a cinnamon note would be good but outside of maybe a holiday type yeah, thing that's consult yeah. pinterest i'm sure you can find a uh that's a good point <laughs> i'm sure everyone someone's figured out something to yeah. do with with this but whatever cinnamon drinks they have for the holidays with a uh like a jack fire or a uh, fireball yeah, if you don't like the that it's syrupy, well, syrupy, right? Yeah. If you want a little less syrupy, you could you could definitely go this route. Yep. Yeah. Not horrible, but mm, I think I would definitely go that at cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. So now this one, this one's kind of interesting. This has become this is a newbie to the market. Yeah, it's relatively new and. Really, a lot of interest, uh, especially mm -hmm. in the social medias. Smoke wagon. Yeah, smoke wagon. So it's they a, popped on the scene in eighteen. I want to say eighteen or nineteen. They they came out with a, a couple different lineups. Um, We've seen three so far. Yes, uh, they have. There's a. So this this is their just plain. Probably, I would say um, entry level. Straight whiskey, yeah, yeah. This is their entry level. Um, as you go up, so this is their entry level, and you can see their bottles pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Like the flowers are, it's more of like a sticker than it is like the bottle. Uh, the next, then they they have three bottles. They have a very small batch, straight, and then they have uh, the single barrel, and then they have the uncut, unfiltered. Those bottles have. Like the bottle actually has the flowers kind of into it. The bottle's it, brown. Yeah, it's it's more of a brown color, and the bottle actually has the flowers like as part of the glass instead of just a sticker on the glass. But this one, these guys are out of Vegas. Vegas. They uh, it's it's an MGP. Yep. But again, it's another high high rye, if I'm not mistaken. It's a higher rye. Yes. And they don't store it out there for obvious reasons. <laughs> it's just too hot and it's too dry. <laughs> They need yeah, that. They need that change. That to... was kind of the funny part. I I wasn't thinking. I was thinking desert climate, big temperature swings, from day to night. Yes, but there's no 
humidity. But yeah, that was that's literally what it was. Without the humidity, the wood would start to dry out and you'd lose product. The liquor would just pour <laughs> straight through the you know, the individual slats. So it's stored somewhere else. They don't say where it's I'm stored. guessing it's probably stored at MGP. MGP has they have plenty <laughs> of facility to to store that. So they go through and they're picking very specific notes, tastes, There's all no, that kind of stuff. No age statement on this one either. No age statement. That's correct. Um, and not really a releasing of the mash bill other than the rye. high rye. That's all they say is it's a high rye. So, but yes, back to your point before, it has been all over social media. It really has. I, I, I had a friend ask me if you want to pick, wanted to pick me up a bottle and I had no, I'd never heard it before. And I asked him if he was buying a bottle and he said, yes. And I said, well, I will sample yours before I, yeah invest whatever and, yep. and this isn't expensive so i mean this a one's 30 dollar bottle yeah the, yeah 31 i think is what i what i saw at the store the other day okay so um and and there's i say that there's not a lot there's just not a lot of information out mm. there on on what they're doing how they're doing there's it. no build up to these guys either it's like i open social media it's, one day and boom, boom it's yeah every, it's everywhere yes yeah it, uh, if you go through Instagram and follow any kind of like, if you follow local liquor stores or bourbon groups or any, out of nowhere, it's, smoke wagon just started flying out there, especially the uncut. Mm -hmm. That one's pretty solid at, I think, usually like 126 ish proof. So they, they've done something right. I have no idea what, but they've done something right. Again, this one's light too on the nose. It is, but there's a lot of rye note in there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny because, you know, it's MGP with a high rise. So was the Hulling Station. This one comes off as a lot of rye notes on the nose. I never know what that is, but there's a very specific note that I get whenever I smell a high rye. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Whistle Pig. Oh. That, that note, that nose note that I get off a of whistle pig, yeah. I'm getting that. Not as strong as the whistle pig. Car caramel is what I get initially. I'm trying to figure out the yeah. uh, when it go like that after. after yeah, it's a, it's a nice little sweet caramel. It gets dry. It does. There's a, um, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what up. does that, but like it just feels like your tongue just dries out a sponge there's a little bit of the rye notes i'm getting on the flavor i am getting a little it's like a just a touch of the mm -hmm. black tea note oh there is some baking spice a touch of cinnamon but there's a i'm gonna say muted sweet note that sits there it's not like super sweet or candied but it's just kind of like a overlying i've got a caramel this one this pool i got a, I got a little bit of honey in the beginning okay but then, yeah, it just kind of dries up. The ethanol for me kind of lingers. It's not a. It's what is what ninety two proof. Ninety two something. Ninety two and a half. Not a lot, but I. I the yeah. aftertaste. I get, I get a little bit of that ethanol burn. So I just did a little chew to it. A lot more of the baking spice comes through. Okay. Um, it doesn't sweeten. It, it gets a little bit more of the baking spice kind of pops through. There's still a lot of those sweet notes. There's no question about it. This is a sweeter mm -hmm. bourbon. Uh, I know we've done the sing single barrel and the uncut. And I will say this and the uncut Cut are better than are way better than that single, single barrel. barrel. I don't know what they were going for in a taste profile with that single barrel. And that was, was unanimous. Good. Yes, that was unanimous. There four of us. Yeah, it did not. Something came out funky in that bottle but the uncut is it's a, a lot of the same notes just the taste is just, amped up yeah. so the uh, the uncut you know like i said it's it's 120 high 120s i don't remember what the the number was specifically i've actually purchased a bottle for, for my own bar cart oh yeah bar i think it's for the price especially around 30 dollars. i think it's it's pretty nice. especially i've had it over a cube it's really tasty over a cube I could see this being better over a cube. Yeah, I know that uncut one with with a with a cube was very solid. Um, straight up, it's got a bit of a kick. 
<laughs> that's what that's what I remember off that one. But, but no, it's just perfect timing because this one, when it hit the social media, it's right like the day before, day two days before our last yeah. meeting, and glad they picked it up. Exactly. I had just seen it really blowing up on social media, and then I go to a whiskey club meeting, and that's one of the bottles that we actually sampled, that, and that's awesome. Like like that's just that's just perfect. So I'm, I, I wonder which, which store did they go to? Elixir, didn't they? No, this no? one came from the local. Oh, all right. R&B. Really? Mm-hmm. I was just there the other day, and they had a couple bottles on the shelf. Not on their allocated cart. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, no comment, no comment. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a solid bottle. I think this in it, this was number four for me. Granddad was, well, Granddad yep. was fifth. Yep. And I had the, the Memphis, the. That was three. Three. And then I did. Two. One, bottle, I did right? two and then one. Yeah. I did three, two, one, four, five. Yep. So. The hauling station, I, I just like the complexity of that. That had a really nice, the Evan Williams, very solid, sweet bourbon notes. It's This one's good. It, well, I, I'm going to say, I, I don't know. I'm interested. I don't know. That might switch down to my fourth compared to this now. Mm -hmm. um, just like today, you know, each day is a little bit different. Your palate's different. I think the biggest thing you like said that. earlier is it's 14 years old and how harsh it was. I just, yeah, I think that's just a big negative to me is like I full well know. All right, so that's f at least four years, probably maybe five, probably less than four, probably less than four, probably less than four. 14 years. You would think that would be a smooth, mm -hmm. complex, interesting drink. Nah, it's mm -hmm. just kind of harsh. <laughs> so again, it goes back to when we started this episode. I mean, just because of the price doesn't make it doesn't make it any better. The value isn't there. So, yeah, I, I and that was really what I think they were going yep. for, and I think they proved their point because I want to say a lot of people had this as number one. A lot of people at the, at the hauling station. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there was uh, what there was. Is there 14 in the meeting? Mm -hmm. I was going to say like five or six had that as number one, like four or five had that as number one. So the majority were here. 30 something, not even 20. Like that's, it says something. It says yep. something that, you, you know, you can't, you can't judge that book by its cover. No, you I really just think you got to be able to just grab one of those bottles, grab a bottle or two. And be a little adventurous. And try it. Give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. I, it makes me more interested to just kind of roll through and, you know, grab that. If it's sub 20, just kind of <laughs> roll through and be like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to grab that and give it a shot. I think it, it might be worthwhile. You might find something really good because at the I'm end of the day, you, if it's a below $20 bottle and you don't like it neat on the rocks, throw it in some soda or something. It's, yeah. Mix it with a, some ginger ale or a cola. So, but I, I, I did like the, the theme of the meeting. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, it's complete, and it's another different We did theme. a blind test the first one. We yeah, wrapped, but that was a, it was a different exercise of blind because it was multiple types of whiskey. Well, but we did have one gentleman that could pick up. Yeah, he did really well. <laughs> well, some of it also, we just wrapped it in a brown bag. Yeah. And you could see from the neck up on right. some of them. So if you knew your whiskey. Yeah, so if you, you knew your you be able knew to pull it, it, you might be able to pull it. But no, theirs was great. It was... Yeah, cleaned out wine cleaned bottles. Out wine bottles. Had no idea what you were yep. looking at. You couldn't see them. They were like all red wine bottles. So they were all darker bottles. So you, you couldn't see color. It was, it was totally blind. And it really led to, I don't know, at least something interesting for me. Yeah. Uh, kudos to that group for, yeah. for uh, a great meeting. Yes. Uh, and we've enjoyed coming back through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. Reevaluating uh, and probably yeah. re renumbering. 
But not that far off. No, not that far off. Not that far off. Maybe flipping. Yeah, one or flipping two. one or two, two here, there, things like that. More, more, <laughs> more being judgy than <laughs> maybe the the flavor profile. But well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Thirteenth Gentleman. We'll have another one here coming up in you know a couple weeks. No, eight weeks, ten weeks. What do we got? Well, I'm not sure because I don't know if we're gonna have. Samples exactly oh, that's for right, the yeah. Yeah. holiday party. Okay. So well, sometime <laughs> early next year. Yeah. Uh, we'll have the next 13th gentleman episode. But we appreciate you joining this episode. Uh, if you've had this or you've had another bottle by any of these distilleries, leave us a comment. We'd love to try to track it down here in the Nashville area and sample it on the show. And we encourage you to uh, hit the like button at the bottom of the screen. And if you could subscribe, that would be great. Um, trying to get our numbers up just a little bit more, especially as you know, we're, we're rolling into the new year. We're gonna start increasing our productivity just a touch. We're, we're gonna be pushing for, we're gonna be pushing for three a week. Uh, so we're gonna do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting with the new year. Um, but I think this is, I, I'm having a lot of fun with yep. this whole process and Sampling these and the whiskey club has been awesome. I, I just, it's been fun and I'm really looking forward to next year. So thanks again for joining and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.